This is RSBNB Update, episode 370, recorded Friday, July 20th, 2012. It just screams Solomon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fabulous episode of RSBNB Update. Thank you for joining us once again, and a special welcome to those of you who might be listening to the podcast for their very first time. I am Uncle Dano, and once again, I'm very pleased and very honored to be a guest host on today's show. We also have with us this week the show's regular co-host, Trekkie, otherwise known as J1, J2, J3. Say hello, Trekkie. Oh, wow. Really? You could tell me to say hello when it's my show? Yeah. <laughs> I'm having fun. As well as another favorite host, Paul. A.K.A. PFK nine nines. Hi. Hey, All Paul, right. What did PFK stand for anyway? Uh, it's my initials. So, and then nine nine nines are my favorite number. If I, I like nine, and then what's better than one nine? Nine of them, nine nines. So, right there on. you go. Yeah. All right. So, to those of you who might not realize, the main host of the show, Shane, is still currently on a bit of a summer vacation, relaxing somewhere nice. We hope. He, and I, uh, he he's actually, gonna be returning next week. He actually went up to the mountain. Uh, for the weekend, so he'll be back roughly either Saturday, or Saturday or Sunday. Uh, and he'll try to upload the the audio, the the podcast when he gets back. Oh, that's so cool. anyway, we have quite a long list of RuneScape update this week. So first of all, let's start off with the bonus XP weekend future changes. So for those who may not have noticed, it was I posted last. Uh, last Friday, right, basically right after we finish off our, our recording. So this is a post by Mod Mark. He posted this right after we finish our podcast on on one Friday. So just a quick note, just a quick post to let you know that we are rethinking the idea of bonus XP weekend. We have run these for the last few years, and while they are quite uh, quite rewarding, there are some big negatives to the way they work. We certainly want to do bonus XP. Uh, want to do uh, XP promotions in the future, but what form they take, we just don't know yet. We wanted to let you know nice and early, so to those of you buying buying stocks uh, up trying to buy, make a quick profit or preparing for a future bonus XP weekend, don't. Actually, we're organizing some other great member rewards for the latter part of the year, so keep reading the news and find out what we planned. Mod Mark. Boo! That's coming from one of the, the Bonus XP Weekend's biggest fans. I love them. I loved them, I guess, now. Well, then again, they may come up with something better than trying to grind for for uh, 10 hours. Yeah, but that that was fun. That's what made it fun. You prepare for a big, huge session that just, you know, you plan out all your moves to get the maximum amount of XP you can get out of all the skills. You prioritize. Mm-hmm. You build up all your supplies in anticipation. and Or you build up a whole bunch of stock, like I was doing too. And so that just before a bonus XP weekend, when it's announced, you dump it all on the grand exchange and you make a, make a lot of money. So, I mean, there were there were things that when you really took advantage of these weekends, you you could get a lot of XP, you could get a lot of GP, and you could really take advantage of it and, and get ahead. Now, I know a lot of people complained about them, that it really wasn't fair, and it devalued the skills and, and all that kind of stuff, and I can understand that. So I, I think now Jagus is, is you know rethinking this, but they are, as we will go through some of these updates, uh, giving us an opportunity to get some extra XP every so often doing various things, and that's cool. Mm, Paul, you have any thoughts? It's nice that they're changing it so that you get a little more regular bonus experience, but I don't know. It, it, it's still kind of kind of lame because I know everyone kind of looked forward to the the bonus XP weekends, and it's like, all right, like as you, as you mentioned, you prep out early, and then right as you log in, you do all the big stuff first. You get one point seven or whatever the bonus or the max two point seven, is, two point seven, and you just. Bang all that out, you get a couple hundred thousand experience, and it's not like it's game breaking. You get two point seven times the experience. It's not a hundred times the experience. It's just a little less than three, so it cuts your time in a uh, third. But it's not too outrageous. And but, it saves you a whole lot of money because if you're doing herb lore right up front and you yeah. got a couple thousand potions to make, you are saving a ton of cash. Yeah, exactly. 
Yes, especially if you have all the dungeoneering scroll, reward, uh, scroll rewards to get you get yourself extra herbs and second ingredients. Um, <sighs> So well, this is kind of sad because I can't do any more bonus XP weekend commercials anymore. Commercials? You used to yeah, do commercials? Rem- remember the little audio questions I used to send in about <laughs> bonus XP weekend? It was like a commercial. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. It's, it's been a while. But you Bonus know, XP weekend, 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 weekend. Ow. <laughs> <clears throat> but, you know, the interesting thing about the last bonus weekend, me and Shane and a couple others were speculating was many of the items didn't exactly go up. A lot of them actually went down for some reason, especially for many potions. I was looking at um, many potions that all were in the red, even right before it started. So I'm I'm assuming most people already stocked up way before then anyway, and I don't know. It just didn't seem – like the idea was great. Just have one weekend to you know level up as much as you can. But I think the problem was that everybody tried to get on the, the exact same time to take advantage of – to try and take advantage advantage of it, and as you know, some many times real life happens, and you can't exactly spend ten hours just sitting in front of a computer for the weekend. <clears throat> yeah, pe- people did get smart after about the third bonus XP weekend, and really did start planning. So that's why you didn't see huge shifts and stuff. People were saving up, mm-hmm. and so people now are just we're, we're really doing it um, for the long term. So, well, we don't know what they're planning in the future. Maybe instead of just doing it for three days, they'll do it for an entire month or so. That'd be that'd be kind of crazy. <laughs> mm. Well, not like basically you'll you'll have a limit, but we'll figure that out. And well, the reason we I brought out that little thing was because of our next topic: the sizzling summer blowout. So, uh, Paul, why don't you take take a crack at this one? Alrighty, the sizzling summer blowout. Uh, whatever you're on the world, it's summer in Glendor. How do you say that? Gelinor. <laughs> Gelinor. Let's go with that. <laughs> to help your, uh, to help sizzle your up your summer every day over the course of August and September, RuneScape members will receive a host of summer goodies. Be a member throughout August and receive 350,000 uh, experience at the end of the month and an extra bonus spin every day. Stay a member throughout September too, and we'll double it. That's 700,000 experience and two extra spins every day in September. Yes. Is that is that two? I know that that's kind of worded incorrectly because that's seven hundred thousand experience every day, but it's it's not every day. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they mean it at the end of the month, so that's still free experience. Uh, to get you further into the summer mood, stay a member throughout August and September, and you'll also receive nine new customization items, includes including a five piece tropical islander outfit with extra. Cape, uh, head and cape accessories, a new title, and even a wild crab transformation dance emote. With over $45 worth of items and spins included, this is really a scorching summer sensation. Hot enough? Well, if all that wasn't enough, players who are members for the entirety of the sizzling summer, 1st of August GMT until 30th of September GMT, will also have the envious chance to choose your fate. Choose your fate is a selection of the four most powerful items ever seen in RuneScape. More exciting details on this next week. You you will not want to miss out on this and much much more. So make sure you remember if you want to take part. So okay. Colin, keep your party on the RuneScape team. That's so, a heck of so, a. Yeah. So here we are. We get rid of bonus XP weekends, but we are uh, Jagex is offering this extra XP uh, for the month of August. Get three hundred fifty thousand XP by the end of the month, and, or at the end of the month, and then another three hundred fifty thousand uh, by being a member all through the month of September. So they are giving us this kind of bonus XP. Now it's probably. Uh, like some previous uh, items that they gave us where we can spend that XP on anything we want to train on, uh, which is nice. I mean, we're getting rid of a whole weekend, uh, bonus XP every six months or so, but we're spreading it out and they're giving us these little opportunities to actually enhance a, a skill training in a particular skill of our choice. Uh, that that's, that's cool. I bet they'll have the same type of uh, limitations. Like it'll be, have to be in a skill over 30, I'm guessing, yeah. or 45 or something. I would say, well, I would say over 50 because for 350,000, that's many, many levels if you're relatively low, uh, low level, have a low level character. It's just true. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot of experience. Uh-huh. 700,000 XP in two months? That's any, a huge amount of experience. Any member that's for, for two months, that's 700,000 experience. That's crazy. That is crazy. Wait, actually, is that 700,000 experience for 
in total, or is that seven hundred thousand dollars? Seven hundred dollars. That'd be nice. Seven hundred thousand <laughs> uh, experience at the end of September, and then you still get three hundred fifty. So that's uh, a little over a million fifty experience total. No, they're giving you three hundred fifty thousand each per month. month. Okay, for a total of seven hundred. It's 000. slightly worded oddly. Yeah. yeah, but well, you know, people yes, don't proofread anymore. It's okay. It's not. It's not grammatically incorrect. It's. It's flow consistency it, it, yeah. thingy. Okay, yes. so we'll touch on the next part, which is the nine new custom uh, customization items, including the five piece uh, tropical islander outfit. So what do you guys think of this one? Oh, great. Another outfit. Just, <laughs> just what we all need. And and this is where I'm going to go mostly in the show. Every time we read one of these uh, updates or news items that Jagex has put out, look at all the wonderful, cosmetic, useless items that they're giving us just to make us more vain. It's just all about appearances to me, I guess, uh, because everything is offering this free stuff, uh, uh, the coins, uh, the spins with the cosmetic items, the Gelinar Games has got co- cosmetic items, this has got cosmetic items. Do we really need so many different changes of clothes? I think the <laughs> mods that are working on this at Jagex might be female, although that might be a sexist comment, but we don't need a bigger wardrobe. I just, that's my opinion. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Same thing that they do to mm. Team Fortress 2. It's like they throw in a new hat. Congrats. You can wear a new hat. Yes. And, uh, but yeah, for, for, for this, it's just kind of funny. They're, they say, with over $45 worth of items and spins included. Well, it's not really something you could actually sell, but, uh, sure. Mm. I guess they're, they're, they're considering those spins actually money now. Because you can buy them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, point. We'll touch more on the cosmetic stuff uh, when we get down to the general store. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have a lot of talk about that later on. But moving on to the next one, we have the Choose Your Fate. Select four items, most of the power, most powerful items ever seen in RuneScape. So, all right, bets. What kind of weapons do you think is going to be that's, there? That's going to have to be a – it's either re, it's it's either not true or it's not – I don't know, not, not – Facsimile? Facsimile? No? I don't know. It's either it's either hyperbole, kind of. Yeah. It's either, like, they're not going to be strong at all, or they'll be temporary, because if they're just giving every member who is a member for two months the most powerful weapon, or most powerful, powerful item ever seen in RuneScape, it's going to get really bad really quick. But I bet you they are going to be pretty darn awesome. Alright, so what do you guys think they are, they're going to be? I have no idea, but it just is a little... I mean, it's it's nice to reward members with an item that kind of gives them an advantage over free players. Let's just say that. Um, it would be nice that if they could reward uh, 10-year veterans, and we're going to get to the 10-year veteran cape later, with something that gives them an advantage just because they've been a member for 10 years or like, actually being a member for a long period of time should have an advantage because you've been paying your membership all the way along. You should have a little bit more of an advantage, maybe a good weapon or something like that, a good piece of armor that you don't get unless you put in the time of membership. Mm-hmm. I, I like that concept. Yes, many games have that idea. But... um you know, we'll talk more about the weapons later on. So, you guys have anything else to add to this little topic? It's kind of looks like it'll be kind of cool. Yeah. All right. So, we'll see what we get at the end at the end of September, which is basically when everybody's in school anyway. All right. So, moving on to the next topic, we have changes to the game cards. Uh, we've they have we have launched a new style of RuneScape game cards that are used for more than just membership. These two new cards available in New Dominations of 10 and 25 will, upon redemption, allow you to choose from several packages: membership, membership and spin, membership and rune coin, and rune coins and spin. In addition to these new packets, we're celebrating the launch with a new with a new promotion. All cards purchased and redeemed before August 31st, 2012, will receive five bonus membership days when purchasing the $10 game card and 15 bonus membership days with the 25 This new style of card is available exclusively through Walmart U.S. stores initially, but will become va- available in other stores and territories at a later date, so watch the space for more details. So, they're getting new cards, and instead of just paying for membership, you can get a little mix of, uh, mix of everything. 
Not so, bad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a okay, uh, decent idea. I think they're really doing this, trying to get people to buy more spins and rune coins. Uh, they should really start getting with, like little bonuses for doing this. Uh, so, your thoughts on this? Uh, the rune coin thing is not too bad. The membership thing is not too bad. I wouldn't have a problem with the spins. Um, if, like, I, I, I come from the perspective that I don't necessarily agree with Shane in that I don't believe you should be paying for a chance to get extra XP or an advantage in the game. I think paying real life money to train your skills and get more XP, I think, is just ethically wrong. Uh, you should be just working for that in-game. So I don't like the idea of actually having, you know, spins be purchasable, whether just be through your credit card or through these cards. I don't have any problem with the rune coins because everything that you can get from cashing in rune coins is basically cosmetic anyways. So far. So far, yes. Yes. But, uh, well, you know, the other thing is that... Uh, as they did mention, the Jagas did mention a couple of months a couple of months ago was that they haven't seen anybody who really abused the spin system where they try to buy like three hundred dollars worth of spins and you know try get get to a ninety nine skill really really quick. So no one has done that, not yet anyway, unless they really want to do it. I think you know in terms of my idea for the spin is that you know let's say that you know you're a well someone. Not like Uncle Dana, who's been working, who has to work to support his family and everything else. You don't, you may not have the time and energy to just sit down and actually play this game. Spins may be something to give you a little, uh, get you back on track. The idea, my, my, my thoughts on this is that if you have spins, you're buying spins because, you know, hey man, I really want to level this thing up, but I don't have the time and energy to just, to just sit down for, 16 for 16 hours over a weekend to try and get it up maybe i can get some of these and, and well i can have i have a chance of giving myself a little boost along the way so it's not i don't really see it as trying to buy a skill it's more of like oh here's a little extra here's a little bump to help you to help you get you up yeah i understand your argument on that uh but from my perspective i realize that the amount of XP that I will eventually get in the game is based on how much time I can devote to the game. And I realize that I can't no life it. I do have a real life and I can only spend a couple of hours, a few hours a week actually playing in the game, maybe an hour an evening or something like that. So I know that I'm not on the same level as somebody who can play the game four to six hours every single day. That to me is okay because we're both on the level playing field of all of our XP is just basically earned because of what we do in the game. Now you've introduced that, okay, that XP is not just due to that, but it's how much money you have to throw into the game. That, to me, is a little different, okay? And and I don't think that catching up to a no-lifer by paying extra, to me, just doesn't feel right. Uh, because, to me, my XP and my levels, I want it to be just about me playing the game. That's all. Okay. Uh... There actually would be targeting your type of player, because the people that can know life it, well, they're going to know life it, and someone who actually has a life and whatnot, they are less likely to be able to know life and uh, want to just get ahead as they can. So it's kind of nice to see that you have that <laughs> that viewpoint because you know if, you, if for a multiplayer game like that, I kind of like to would get my own. I would like to get my own levels and not buy them. Same thing with the items and all. Yeah, but, and. Uh, if you remember the episode last uh, fall or winter 339 when I went on and gave you the, I guess it was called the lecture on <laughs> the moral of the story, right? Yes, yes. It's, it's all about what is the value of your skill cape when you get your 99? Is it about you working hard and, and playing fair and getting every single XP point by actually working away at the game? Well, not anymore. Now it's about, oh, well, part of that cape was actually just bought because I just paid out of my wallet. Uh, to me, that lowers the value of my cape. So I, I want to definitely wear my cape with pride that it's all me. Yeah. I, 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 I'm with you on that. Uh, all right. So, uh, without further ado, the biggest topic this weekend that's been that's been all the rage everywhere is the Solomon's General Store grand opening. Oh, you want me to do this, Jackie? Sure, go for it. 
Okay, uh, Solomon, uh, a genie of exquisite taste and distinction, has a plethora of exclusive merchandise to enhance your character's appearance. Woo, all right. And is offering them for purchase in his boutique, Solomon's General Store. There are costumes, uh, becoming a cunning assassin or a debonair swashbuckler, and visual enhancements for your weapons. How about a pact breaker longsword? There are also animations that change how you skill and teleport a variety of emotes and a host of new titles last but certainly not least a banner that allows you to stamp your mark on gelinor free players and members alike will have access to the store from within the game and as a celebration of his store's grand opening solomon is offering all first-time visitors to his store 200 rune coins to spend uh that's on top of the 10 percent that all members receive in the store it's 10 percent it must be a discount, right? Mm-hmm. That all members receive in the store permanently. And then it, uh, alongside Solomon's general store is the new customization system. This lets you change your appearance without losing the stats from your regular worn items, set up new animation overrides and manage your titles. It also allows you to preview the various items and animations available in Solomon's general store. So you can view them on your character before making a purchase. This dressing room even lets you save uh, costume combinations for the future. The customization system can be accessed anytime from your worn equipment tab. Rune coins are a new currency that they've introduced purely for Solomon's General Store, and they're available for purchase through the Jagex billing system, accessed either uh, through the site or via the Buy Rune Coins button from inside the store itself. And remember, once again, for all our members, they have a discount of 10% on all items available in the store. Uh, all items that are purchased in the store are untradeable. So, uh, that's basically what they've introduced. Um, what are your thoughts on some of the things that you can get with these rune coins? All right. So, well, Paul, want to take a stab at it first? I'll take a look what they got. They got a bunch of new shirts. I like the new the new teleport animations. Those are cool. A lot of new skills. Like, yeah, Pegasus is cool. I want to team with me. This one's, stuff. Team one's cool, but it's a little pricey. Click on animations. General store animations. Lumberjack woodcutting. That's kind of cool. It's kind of nice that you have to pay money. It's like a... Well, like I was mentioning earlier, it's like a hat in Team Fortress 2. It doesn't actually add anything to the game other than the fact that you look different. But you are you don't gain any XP. You don't gain any bonuses above anyone else. You just look different. So that's kind of cool. Yes, yes. Uh... You know, everybody, almost almost everybody on the forums and, and in the game were complaining that, oh, there's another way for Jagex to suck up some more nickels and dimes from people. And quite honestly, look around at every single MMO. Paul, Dano, can you name one, ga- one MMO game that does not have something like this? Uh, no, not really. I guess they all have it. Yes, because it's a nice way for them to keep, get some extra income in. And again, this is purely cosmetic. It does not, it is not, this is not a pay to win game. And so things you buy is just for you because hey, I thought it was cool. So I bought it. You know, take a look at World of Warcraft. What can you buy with real money in the game? You buy mounts and other little vanity pets. Do those pets do anything different? Most of them do not. They just, it's just a pet as a, as a status symbol. Same with the mounts. Uh, look in Team Fortress 2. They have lots and lots of hats. Can you get the hats? Yes, you can. Does it take forever? Yes, it does. Can you just pay, you know, 10 bucks to get it really quick just to say, hey, I got it? Sure you can. Go right ahead. And it's the same with Star Trek Online. There are plenty of little uniforms that cost way too much, uh, but they have it anyway because people want to look good. And again, this is all purely cosmetic. They're, I don't know why people are, are, are like so angry over this. You don't want to use it. Fine. It's really just for people who want to look snazzy. Let them, you know? It's like, yeah, I, uh, it'd be like I don't me. have too much of a problem with the cosmetic thing. I mean, you're buying uh-huh. something that just is going to make your character look good or make your teleport even fancier or your actions a little fancier. So you're beefing up your character and you're buying enhancements to your character. It's not giving you an end game advantage, and that's fine. That's fine to me. And, but there's know, a lot of them. Every time they come out with something, it's another new thing to enhance your character's looks or appearance. Uh, it's all about vanity. I mean, it's just, eh, it's just a little shallow. <laughs> yeah. People are vain creatures. I mean, well, yeah, keep in mind, people will pay good money for a good suit. 
But if you think about it, all the people working on the designs of all of these new things and the animations, all these things that are cosmetic, their efforts could be better spent fixing some of the graphical glitches, Mm -hmm. uh, making new areas of Gelenor, designing stuff that actually is enhancing the game itself and not just your character. Mm -hmm. But what if Jagex operates like Google and this is their... But 30% project? No, not 30. 10? 15? Something like that. Where they get like 10% of their time just to do whatever the heck they want. And then this is their... <laughs> We're going to create a store where you can buy stuff. <laughs> it's not going to actually be helpful, but... Yeah. Then it took off because it gets Jagex money. Yep, money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Money, money, money. But you know, the thing is that I w- I'm hoping they will implement in the future is a way to get some of these items without actually paying real money. Uh, my little me, I was thinking, talking about this with one of my other friends online, and we were talking about that. Why don't we start having loyalty points to be traded into rune coins? Because, it, you know, let's face it, after a while, we're all gonna be, we're all gonna outspend the loyalty points. I don't think we're all gonna be getting every little aura that we can get our hands on every single emote. We should really be able to trade some of the loyalty points into getting some rune coins. Maybe like for every 500 loyalty points you get, uh, I don't know, 20 rune coins to spend. Most of us are going to end up having a lot more loyalty points than rune coins anyway, and it's just really a way to get people who don't want to pay but still want to send items to work toward it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Right. They could just stick that as a reward for your membership points and say, hey, trade in, I don't know, what, I don't know what the denominations for loyalty points are, but t- say trade 10 in for 5... Rune coins, boom! <laughs> It'll be. But you know, in, we we all realize that they will eventually add more items into the into the store in the future, and they may actually start going to the whole pay. Uh, they may go start doing the whole pay to win route, but we don't know yet. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, and if would, I look at it, uh, if I look at my loyalty points, I haven't really bought that much with them. I've got. Um, the Jack of Trades aura, the um, Greater Call of the Sea, and the Reverence aura, and that's it so far. I haven't spent them. So I'm actually trying to save them, build them up, so that if they do add some really good stuff to the loyalty shop, that I can buy something really quickly with it, because I'm saving. Yep. Yeah. I just actually, I just actually spent all of mine on the uh, Greater aura, Greater Reverence aura, and the Jack of All Trades, because Jack of All cra- Trades gives you some some XP every day if you actually do the thing. Yeah, I love it. Mm-hmm. I get, I keep forgetting. Um, okay then. So anyway, uh, thoughts on you know final thoughts on the general store? I approve. You approve, Mister Dana? It's vain. It's vain, but it doesn't ruin the game. <laughs> Maybe I like day. my look as I am in the game. I really don't need another costume. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Bring on the plastic surgery, yeah. Oh, there's oh, there's one thing I do like is that customization window where you get to take a look at your character as you're trying on the stuff and you actually get uh, a chance to zoom in on your head as well. It's a, it's a great way to do a screenshot for um, a, um, basically an avatar. And I've changed my <laughs> avatar on the, on the forums, the RSBNB forums, with this new thing that I took a picture of myself. I also posted myself wearing the 200 million... Uh, glasses that you get and we're going to talk about that soon um so it's actually a good way to take a picture of your character uh and create a graphic by that customization window i like that one yes, yes. yeah that is a good picture Ooh la la all right so Ooh. any so anyway uh you know love it or hate it is here to stay and quite honestly every game in the future is going to have microtransaction whether you <laughs> like it or not so remember when there's a will there's money to be made so let's um <laughs> let's uh, move on to the next topic on our list, which is the ten year veteran cape. So what do you get for playing subscribing for to RuneScape for ten years? You get a little cape. Today we see a long awaited launch of the ten year veteran cape available only to members that have been playing for ten years or more. So the gates of Glenanor had barely been open a year when Andonia made his first appearance on the map. The po- and the poor or should be rich. Uh, Car Carnelians first fell victim to the heinous uh, Hezo cult 
in 2002 was also the year that the Turtle Island welcomed many new visitors uh, to, to RuneScape. And man, many and adventurers, wow, really? That's a bad typo. And many adventurers also met their demise at the hands of the newly arrived King Black Dragon. Back in the real world, 2002 saw Japan and Korea host the FIFA World mm. Cup, the Lord of the Rings Two Towers first hit cinema screens. Oh, that was an awesome movie. And if you're playing our game for 10 years, you certainly deserve a special item to mark this magnif- magnificent uh, commitment. This prestigious garment is available to members only, a member item, and it can be purchased from Hans, who can be found in the grounds of Lumber's Castle. Before you head off to get your cape and enjoy this impressive new emu, we'd just like to say that a big thank you to all our loyal players, and we look forward to creating further further veteran capes as uh, as and when each new milestone arrives. Every five years, <clears throat> I guess. You know. uh, maybe. So, um, Mr. Nana, have you been subscribed for 10 years? No. Um, it will be another four years for me. I've been subscribed for six how do you tell well how can you tell if how long you've been uh, subscribed for supposedly uh, you're able to talk to Hans and he should be able to tell you how many more days you have left or how many more years you have left until you can get the 10 year cape I tried it but it, it was just going through a dialogue saying that oh you've already got a 5 year cape um, you, can't, you can't get another one but it didn't give me the dialogue that tell, told me how many days I have left till I can get the 10 year cape so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. But mm, but I know okay, some people have successfully done that and figured out when they can get the 10-year cape. All right. So we'll see what happens in the future date, at a later date. Um, I've been subscribed around, I think, 2000, 2003, but then I took a... Took a hiatus because I got sick of the game because I was I was starting to speak to I was starting to do chores in the game, not actually play, and that's always bad. That mean, um, are they going to give you one, including your time in two thousand three, or do you have, is, does it have to be ten years continuous? I assume it'll be ten years continuous. I would assume so too, but that's like if you have a slight, like your credit card just bounced. Like I've had that happen. It's like the credit card went, um, um, not defunct, but it uh, got a new number, and the old number was no longer active. And I was like, oh well, it lapsed. Showed up in Lumbridge the next day, and I was like, dang it. But uh, yeah, that, that's six hundred dollar cape. That's it's not bad. And I guess the cape isn't so fancy, and it, the emote that you do with it really isn't that fancy either. So I've seen some disappointment on some of the people and uh, venting on the forums. Alrighty, uh, let's see. Moving, I guess we can just move on to the next topic on our list, which is the behind the scene scene video, the Glenanor Games. Uh, just a quick rundown. It's just that it, it just shows what's going to be happening within the next couple of weeks as they're kind of par- part uh, parodying the Olympics. Uh, you can take a look at the video and you know see if you like it, like what's going to happen or not. Uh, you do you have any other inputs on this one? Nope. Nope. Paul, no. Nope. All right, nope. and just to wrap everything up with RS update this weekend. This weekend beta event is going to be Soul Wars, and they also have a little competition where, uh, in order to show off your killer skills, all you need to do is take an epic screenshot of you in battle and then send it to us at community at jaggers.com. We'll take the meanest and the most magnificent and give them pride of our place, uh, pride of place on our official RuneScape Facebook page. And if not feeling familiar to find Arts of Soul Wars, make sure you read up on the game over on the website. So, this is going to be this beta weekend's event. It's going to be Soul Wars. So, have fun killing each other. Soul Wars is a, Indeed. Soul Wars is a good mini game. And finally, last but not least, they finally got 200 million bot accounts. I mean, uh, bot account, bot account. Uh, regular, uh, regular good accounts. Alright, so, uh, anyway, you'll get to have a party. You, have, you can go down, let's see. Uh, party demons have appeared in Barbarian Village and Feroxaurus and at the bandit camp, but they've been partying for so long that they just can't stop. Uh, the, the Presto the Mage, who's waiting for you near the demons, knows just how to put them out of their misery, though. It's up to you and your friends to take down the demons. 200 million hit points with the Boogie Bow. 
There are no requirements needed to wield the bow, so everyone can take a shot. Special party gift, party gift await those who do. What's well, what's more, it's open to both free players and members, totally risk free. And it's uh, I don't know when it's over though. I don't think it says when it's over. Oh, and here's the video of the 200 million count player testimonies. Um, you can watch that if you want. Uh, I don't need to watch someone in the cardboard box. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, so you guys have, so Mr. Daniel, you went down, you got the boogie bow, didn't you? Yes, I did, yep. Yeah, I actually right, was watching so. the counter as it was going up, and I actually saw it turn over to 200 million. Um, and I guess what happened is, I, I wasn't in the game at the time, but people were telling, uh, discussing it as a later on and on the forums that every NPC in the game actually did a little dance <laughs> at the same time or something <laughs> like that, uh, which is kind of cool. <laughs> and then everybody swarmed to either Barbarian Village, Varrock Sewers, or the Bandit Camp, uh, talked to this guy, uh, Hey Presto, and uh, he basically gave you this boogie bow. Now, this boogie bow is a really elaborate kind of uh, nice cosmetic item. It's a bow, but it's actually a real bow and you can shoot other NPCs with it. It only has a plus one ranged attack bonus and a 0 0.1, uh, other ranged strength bonus. So it's not a strong weapon, but it's really kind of cool looking. And, uh, you fire it on and you kill this, uh, party demon who appears, who is basically just there to dance and party, but everybody is just smacking him with it. Now, it's able, this bow is able to hit up to a million uh, hit points <laughs> on this thing. So having 200, <laughs> 200 <laughs> million, yeah, a max hit of 1 million with this thing on this creature. Uh, so so having 200 million life points or, or constitution points or whatever you want to call it and having a max hit of 1 million, he was taken down pretty quickly. And once you basically kill him, you go back, you talk to um, the guy again, and he gives you this wonderful pair of 200 million eyeglasses. And if you ever <laughs> saw those people on New Year's Eve in, in Times Square, and remember 2002, I think, was one of the big years where you wear these glasses and it was two, and the zeros were your eyes and the other two on the other side. This yep, is just like yep, it, but yep. it's two million, so the zeros wrap around your head all the way around. I've got a post of myself wearing it on RuneWire if you really want to see it. Uh, another great <laughs> cosmetic item that I don't know, is Diango going to keep this for me or do i have to take up another bank space for this but it, it was fun it was okay i liked it that's good oh uh, i see your i see your glasses too two zero zero <laughs> huh okay i like your dash but you need a man beard dude yeah i only have a stash and actually i do wear glasses in real life and i can't put them on in the game so now i got a pair mm Hmm. There you go. All right, so uh, go on down and kill those demons. I, I don't, I don't know if they're here forever or, or if uh, something else will happen. But they're there for now. So go and kill them. Thanks for listening to this portion of RSBNB Update. You can find the full episode and more at update.rsbnb.com. Also remember to stop by our community and join our forums at rsbnb.com/forums. We look forward to seeing you there.